You know, friends, there are times in our lives when we recognize that God is in control of our lives, not only theoretically, but actually very profoundly experientially. And Pam and I had that experience last week on the highway. We were heading up the 400 highway on Saturday morning and a car was slowing down beside us trying to get our attention and he was pointing to our vehicle. And he said, as you roll down the window, you have a flat tire. And I thought, oh, it must be a bit low. I mean, I'm zipping along at 100 clicks an hour and, you know, surely I would notice if our tire was, was flat. So the trouble was that we were already on a stretch of the 400 that there wasn't an obvious, uh, there wasn't an obvious area to, to pull over. And you don't wanna pull over on the side of the road for the danger that that is. So I'm looking for an exit. So it took us a couple of kilometers to find an exit and we eventually pulled over. And just as we pulled over, there was a, a little outcropping area that you know sometimes they, they do construction on and we were able to pull over there. So it was really safe, out of the way of any traffic and kind of got out and thought, well, maybe we better pump that tire up a little bit. And just as we're turning, the guy beside us, another guy is like, hey man, you're, your tire's flat. We, oh, thank you very much. We're thinking, oh, these kind people that are around to let us know we have a little difficulty. Pam and I get out of the car, guys, and I look, and that tire has got the rim on the ground. I mean, this tire is so flat, I don't know how the, the car is rolling, even to a stop, just in this little construction pullout. Never mind how we are driving along at 100 clicks an hour, and that I couldn't even tell that the tire was that flat. It's just incredible. Those are moments that Pam and I get out and we're just shooken up because we start to realize how dangerous that was from an earthly level. <sighs> and at the same time, just so thrilled that it is so obvious how God takes care of us in moments like that. You know, I'm out the back of that church here now and you know, the four, 401 is, uh, well, it's right there, isn't it? It's uh, a baseball throw away from us. I'm hearing the sound of trucks and cars and just thinking how profoundly dangerous a place is like that that we live in and at the same time how profoundly cared for and safe we are when the Lord Jesus determines to take care of us like that. You know, I, I parallel that ob how, how obvious that seems to us that God was taking care of us with a, a news report that Pam and I were listening to this morning on the news and I'll, I'll put the link to it below on the video here but there was a story of two doctors who had spoken about this just incredible and even the newscaster was willing to use the word miraculous that they had seen someone um, sort of passed out on the side of the road and they went over and performed CPR and later that week this same gentleman that they had revived actually came in for heart surgery by the same guy who performed CPR on him. Just incredible. That was amazing enough. Two years later, same scenario happens that they find someone who's in cardiac distress. They go over, they perform CPR. And again, later that next week, this same person is in for heart surgery. There was a husband and wife, they were both uh, medical doctors. I believe it was the husband who's a cardiologist and the, his wife is a gynecologist, a different discipline. And of course, this gentleman who was actually doing this surgery, twice in two years, has the opportunity not only to quote, save someone's life, literally bring them back from the dead. I, I've got enough doctors and nurses close to me and my family and friends to know that when Someone's heart is stopped. That's what that means. That's they have died and let's see what physically they can do to bring them back. And, and that's what CPR does. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation. He resuscitates. They were not breathing. They're not alive for those few moments, literally by medical definition. And they come back to life. And these two doctors had this amazing opportunity on CTV News this morning to uh, testify to how amazing it was. And even one of the hosts 
said, what would you call this? Because the people I go to church with would call you blessed. And they said, well, I really believe in fate. I really believe in being in the right place at the right time. It's just such a wonderful coincidence. And I thought, Lord, Lord preserve us. Because as, as you know, there is a story in the Bible, an account in the Bible, a true account in the Bible, that speaks directly to this kind of idea. Do you remember the story, the account? And I've used the word story, I, I don't mean a fable. I mean, it's the account of what the Bible is written. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, where the rich man and Lazarus both die, and the narrative says that the Lazarus was received into the bosom, into the, the, the embrace, as it were, of, of Father Abraham, and the rich man was in torment in hell. And the rich man is pleading with Abraham to send a messenger to his brothers so that they would not come to this place of torment like, like he is. And Abraham answers him, as you know, Luke chapter 16, verse 31. They have Moses. They have the prophets. And if they will not listen to them, they will not listen, even if a person was to return from the dead. As Pam and I were listening to this news report this morning, I looked over to her and I said, that's a verse that comes to mind, honey. You've got these incredibly brilliant and, in this case, incredibly gracious and generous and kind and compassionate doctors who are saying, even I've seen someone come back from the dead, even if I was involved in it, even the fact that I was involved in it, they're not believing in the reality of Christ, of the Lord Jesus Christ, the author and the sustainer of life and the determiner of death and life. And you know, it's, it's just sad, isn't it? And not in a condemnatory way. I don't mean it's on one hand, it's not a, not a big surprise, is it, that folks would, would think that or would fail to acknowledge the reality of the Lord Jesus Christ in the world. But I thought, you know, there it is. And the difference is not that Pam and I are so much better for recognizing that a blown tire that could have, should have blown at least, it didn't blow, but could have and certainly could have, uh, by all accounts, taken our lives, that we, we recognize that and these poor dummies don't. That's not my suggestion at all. It's the miracle of grace, which is a miracle of sight sight to see the truth and the beauty of what the Lord Jesus is doing in this world. We see because the Lord Jesus gives us eyes to see. And to pray, dear friends, that God would be pleased that as he shows himself mighty to save as he did at the hands of these two surgeons as much as he did for the experience of Pam and I having this blown tire, I keep saying blown tire, it shouldn't have, it didn't blow, it could have blown. But that God would just be pleased to use scenarios like that to open people's eyes to the reality of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you will know as we've just come through Reformation Month in October that the well-known Bible translator William Tyndale of England, that just as he was being killed and martyred for his faith, his last words are reported to be, Lord, open the eyes of the King of England. O open his eyes to see that the Bible truly is God's word. And only a few years later, the Bible was translated into English and sanctioned by King James himself. And we get what we know as the King James Bible. God has opened my eyes, God has opened your eyes, friends. The only reason that we have that sight is because God has been pleased to give sight to the blind. Is that not what Jesus said the Messiah would do when he would come? 
And we pray that even this coming weekend, as we come together here on the Lord's Day, that God would open our eyes and that we would perceive and believe wonderful things out of his word and that our lives would be changed to the glory of God. Looking much, very much forward to worship with you, worshiping with you here, not outside anymore as we did for a number of weeks this summer, but indoors at the church here, 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. See you, friends.